Hello, this is Kendrick with worldmedicalschool.org. Today we're going to talk about uh, post-operative complications. Really, I just wanted to talk about uh, post-op fever, but I'm going to mention some of the others here too because they are important. So post-op fever is uh, one of the most important things to manage. And uh, then we have nausea and vomiting, which is the most common uh, post-operative complication. You also have respiratory uh, problems that are a big issue in the post-op period, uh, cardiovascular complications, all the state of consciousness, and urinary retention. We'll go over a few of these. So post-op fever, this is what I really wanted to get at. So the causes, um, we, we usually have that acronym WIND, WATER, WOUNDS, uh, WALKING, and WONDER DRUGS. And uh, that's a good acronym, or it's a good mnemonic, I mean. Um, but uh, one of the things that we've talked about in the past, or that we've used in the past, is uh, not accurate anymore. So atelectasis is one of the first things we usually uh, think of when we think of post-op fever. And uh, that has recently uh, been been kind of shut down as a reason for post-op fever. They don't think it causes fever at all. And uh, even on the even on the up to date fit page for post op complications, it still said atelectasis. But if you then if you went to the post post op fever page, then they they said atelectasis is no longer thought to be a cause. Um, and I think I have a link to a study that you can look at at the end, um, so you can verify that. But so wind stands for pneumonia or pulmonary embolism. Water UTI. Um, wounds, um, inflammation, uh, just from a surgical site is, is now probably thought to be the most common reason of post-op fever, especially early post-operative fever, which those are, that's the category that we used to attribute mostly to atelectasis. So inflammation, uh, just from the, the wound, is, is probably the most common cause of post-op fever. Um, infected wounds or abscesses are, um, are also a cause. Usually those will show up a little bit later. The fever will show up a little bit later. Um, DVTs, of course, show up, but those are usually a couple of days later, um, a few days later. And then we got our wonder drugs. Antibiotics, heparin, and diuretics are the most common drugs that cause post-op fever. But there's actually uh, lots that do. Um, then there's also a, a malignant hyperthermia. I don't know if anybody remembers this story, but a few years ago, a, a, a cheerleader uh, died um, in a surgical center because she had a malignant hyperth hyperthermia. And it's caused by um, a certain uh, genetic mutation um, that makes uh, people uh, unable to um, tolerate anesthetic gases. So this, this young lady, unfortunately, was uh, in for a, uh, a breast reconstruction, and, um, she, and she died in the, in the surgical center because they, they didn't have... Uh, the antidote to this, which is dantrolene. So then we also have uh, wonky thyroid or adrenals. Hope you don't mind that I threw that in there um, because uh, the, we can get a uh, thyroid storm and you can also get, um, you can also get a adrenal crisis after surgery. So those are things that, that may be on your differential. So the treatment of post-op uh, fever First of all, you just want to remove any unnecessary treatment. So, if they are, um, if they try and get them, uh, uh, get their catheters out and things like that, um, remove any drugs that they're getting that they don't necessarily need right now, um, and um, then we want to, um, what is BS antibiotics in unstable mean? BS antibiotics in unstable. Shoot, I'm sorry, I don't even remember what my own my own. Uh... <laughs> okay, I can't remember. Um, so um, you give a oh, broad spectrum, <laughs> give broad spectrum antibiotics if if somebody's unstable, um, and uh, 
and then you DC those antibiotics after 48 hours if, if no cause. So you get your cultures if you think things need to be cultured, and then you give them broad-spectrum antibiotics. And then if you don't ever see a cause of the fever, um, then you take them off the antibiotics. Of course, if they're stable um, and you don't have a cause of infection, don't put them on antibiotics because you don't know what you're treating. Um, Post-operative nausea and vomiting. This is actually, somebody did a study s saying that this is the most feared surgical complication. Uh, people are really worried about how they're going to feel afterwards because um, nausea and vomiting is so common. And uh, the main risk factors are uh, young females, people who get motion sickness, uh, people who, who don't smoke. Um, so if you, are, uh, if you are not a smoker, it's a good time to start. I'm just kidding. Obviously, smoking has a lot more uh, negative effects, but uh, this one is, is not one. Um, prior post-operative -oper nausea and vomiting are um, all risk factors, so you might want to do prophylaxis with uh, like a 5-HT3 uh, inhibitor um, like uh, on Dancitron or any of the other Citrons. Scopalamine is also uh, useful. You usually get this in a patch. Um, others that uh, dexamethasone I hadn't actually heard of, but I guess that's used. Uh, metoclopramide and droperidol are also others. Respiratory complications. There's a few different reasons my, why you might have problems breathing after this. Uh, airway obstruction. So the uh, anesthetics and... Uh, and the uh, muscle uh, relaxants may um, cause pharyngeal laxity, which uh, makes it harder to breathe. Also, you can have edema, especially if the surgery was anywhere near the neck. Um, you can also have a decreased respiratory drive from, from the opioid, opioids and sedatives, um, so you might need to give uh, uh, Narcan or flumaz Flumazenil for the... Um, uh, benzodiazepines. Um, of course, neuromuscular blockade uh, can cause a dis decreased respiratory drive. Also, if people are in a lot of pain, if it's a thoracic surgery and it hurts to breathe, they may um, they may s not get enough air. Decreased gas exchange can be caused by atelectasis. This is a real cause. Uh, atelectasis does do something. Um, and pulmonary embolisms, which again usually will show up later, but you can also get uh, fat embolisms uh, directly from surgery. Some cardiovascular complications. This is too big of a subject for me to cover here, but you can get arrhythmias. You can get hypotension either from sepsis uh, if they have a prior infection or hypovolemia if they've lost a lot of blood. Hypertension um, also is a possibility. The pain, the anxiety, um, urinary retention, which we'll talk about in a second, and uh, drug withdrawal. If they're on drugs and they've been off for the, the uh, preoperative and postoperative period, they might go into withdrawal. Urinary retention. Um, you can get kind of a mechanical urinary retention if, um, if the procedure was done around uh, the pelvic area. Also, you can get anesthesia-related urinary retention. So to diagnose this, um, they recommend, the article I read recommends doing the ultrasound first and, um, and figuring out what's going on, um, and then you can drain the bladder just because you might be causing damage if you are trying to drain a bladder that really is not holding uh, urine. Um, but it sounds like a lot of people will, will put a catheter in uh, if there's urinary retention first. So... I don't know what, it uh, sounds like the recommendation would be do ultrasound first. So um, this is the article I was talking about, atelectasis as a cause of postoperative fever. You can look that up. It was in CHEST in 2011. And um, if you want to get involved in this project, you can leave a comment below to help us make our videos better. And you can also go to worldmedicalschool.org backslash volunteer. And there's lots of great ways that you can be involved. Thanks.